All right, I need to do a video here exposing Robert Breaker. Um, I know you're watching, Robert. You're a liar. You're a deceiver. You are um, acting like you believe the King James Bible, and you don't for one minute. Uh, going to be a, a strong rebuke today. But I'm doing this specifically for my viewers um, to be able to tell when someone is lying to you. All right, That's why I'm doing this. Um, I have plenty of other work to do, but this is very important. This whole thing of this Trinity versus Godhead thing has been going on now. It's been raging now for, you know, over, I guess just about a year, maybe even a year. I'm not sure. Um, but I saw some older things. I was going back and forth with Eric John Phelps on the issue. And um, he's a Trinity believer. And uh, that was from May of last year, 2017. So this has been going on, been going on for a while. It's April right now, 2018. But uh, it's very important. I'm going to be talking more about this as we, you know, in other future studies. But uh, I want to show you how he lies here. But before I do that, let me just show you here. Um, this is the Catechism of the Catholic Church right here. Uh, U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops.org there. This is the Catechism right here. You can see this is the side here. I'm going to be reading this. Let me zoom in for you. Um, try to keep this so you can see it number 232 it says here the faith of all Christians I can't okay faith of all Christians let me do it this way I think you can the faith of all Christians rests on the Trinity it's very important to a Catholic go down to 234 here it says the mystery of the most holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God and Himself. It is therefore the source of all the other mysteries of faith, the light that enlightens them. It is the most fundamental and essential teaching of the in the hierarchy of the truths of faith. All right, keep that in mind. All right, in other words, a Catholic infiltrator they can come out and they can speak against Roman Catholicism and the abuses of the Pope and the Mass and transubstantiation and whatever else, but they cannot speak against the Trinity. The Trinity is the central core teaching, the central most important dogma of the Catholic Church. So you'll see Catholic infiltrators and they'll come out and you have a James White and he'll debate, you know, wink, wink. He'll debate uh, a Jesuit like Mitch Pacwa, but then Mitch Pacwa recommends James White's book on the Trinity. Um, but, you know, that's how the game that these guys will play. They'll come out and they'll speak against Catholicism, but they'll never touch the Trinity because that is the central core doctrine of Roman Catholicism. A Bible believer is going to look and say, well, yeah, you know, i got to admit the word Trinity is not in the King James Bible. And when you actually start to study this whole thing, you'll realize hey, that the, even the concept of this Trinity thing, it's not there. You can't teach the Catholic Trinity without adding to the Scriptures. We're going to see it here with Robert Breaker. This is very important because a lot of people are being lied to by Robert Breaker. And Robert Breaker, I know you're watching. I'll show the proof of that here in just a minute. You're a liar. You're a deceiver. You're going to stand before God one day, and you're going to have to be giving an account for deceiving and lying to people. I would not want to be in your shoes. But let's continue here. Okay, welcome. I'm Robert Breaker, and uh, I thought I'd do this short video. I actually wanted to do this a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's just so beautiful outside. I had planned to have my Bible and to stand outside by the by the fence line of my neighbor's, where he has many, many beautiful, beautiful azalea trees. And I thought I'd stand be between the azalea uh, plants and and give this short video. But I just haven't had time. 2018 is going by so quickly. It's hard to keep up. And there's so much to do. But several weeks ago on the cloudchurch.org, uh, also on YouTube, I, as I put out a new sermon every week in English and Spanish, the sermon back then was over clarifying the Trinity. And I was talking about the Trinity and how the Trinity is one God in three persons. And I found something in the Bible, and I said, oh, this is good. And then I found something else, and I said, oh, oh yay. And so I found these, and I wanted to share this. And I'll do that today. I'll give you two scriptures to prove that God is one God in three persons. Okay. He's going to give you two scriptures that prove that God is one God in three persons. Now, if you're going to prove that, you're going to have to provide 
that wording. It's not going to do it for one minute. And I find it ironic that, oh, this is about his older sermon and things, and, and it just so happened that this video of his, there, Robert, your video came out three days after I came out with my most recent video attacking this Catholic Trinity thing, showing the origin of divine essence being completely pagan. It's from the philosophers, according to the Catechism. I showed it on camera. All right. I have the information. I have the materials. Um, I have the original source documents, in, in other words, to prove what I'm saying. But uh, we're going to watch this whole video, by the way. I'm going to debunk this thing thoroughly. But let's continue. And uh, I believe that. I've always believed that. I've described God as making man in his image. And man has three parts. So God has the three parts of man. But also, God can do something that man can't do. God can divide up the three separate parts that makes up himself into three distinct persons. So I... Uh, uh, uh. See? See, there's the deception. This is how the deceiver works. Remember, Satan is very subtle. God does have three parts, body, soul, spirit. That's absolutely true. But then he takes that and he says, and, and you know, God can take those three parts and turn them into three separate persons. There's no scripture for that. None at all. You're going to see how he absolutely just completely deceives and lies in this video. Watch this. I firmly believe that God is one God with three persons. And I believe that's in the Bible. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. But I've only found two places in the Bible that says God the Son and God the Father is a person. Okay. Found two places in the Bible. A breaker, you're a liar. It says... God the Father, God the Son, is a person. It does not say God the Son. There are no scriptures at all that say God the Son, or even hint at the Son, you know, God the Son thing. It's a somehow a separate God from God the Father. It's absurd. You know, and, and if you're innocent, if you've just been repeating things, these Catholic, you know, things that have come in and whatever else, then you need to repent of it. Drop your pride and come out and say, yeah, okay, there is no word Trinity. God the Son does not appear in Scripture. There is no divine essence. That stuff is all whatever. And there is no such thing as God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Like the old hymn says, unfortunately, which needs to be scrapped. It's not Scripture. And so what I'm going to do in this video is something that I don't do very often. I'm going to allow comments on this video. And what I want is I want a verse that shows that the Holy Spirit is a person. I wonder if there is one, and I'm going to get to that here in a minute, but I'm going to allow on this video comments. A lot of people say, Brother Breaker, why don't you allow comments? Well, number one, I have over 700 videos on YouTube. There's no way I could ever read all of the comments that I get from people. And number two, the Bible says, leave off contention before it be meddled with. A lot of people just want to write a little uh, uh, mean, uh, conceited little, little comment and, and something that's not nice. And a lot of times there are people that, that just want to cuss and say bad words. And I, I don't want my viewers to see bad words. So. You get like a lot of your followers, Breaker, that came to my channel and were putting profanity in the comments and things, defending you. I just, from the beginning, said no comments and haven't allowed that. I think in about five or six of my videos I've allowed some comments. But I just don't, matter of fact, I, I, I go to my YouTube page and I just figured this out the other day. <laughs> um, and I just figured something out here. Look at this, top subscription, my channel. So don't pretend that you don't watch me, Breaker. You're subscribed to my channel. But you just, you know, just out of the blue decided to make a video, you know, talking about something that you did in the past and whatever else. Coincidentally, three days after my most recent video attacking the Catholic Trinity, showing that it stems from Roman Catholicism, the whole concept of the Trinity, and it's their most important doctrine. It's just, just coincidence. Coincidence. And by the way, I'm not subscribed to you, Breaker, nor will I ever be. Um, this is something here, up on the top right, and it says notifications, and it's like a little bell. And I guess people write to me on YouTube through this thing. And I don't have time to read those and respond. I tell people, if you want to write to me, write to me via email. I put my email on the cloudchurch.org website. 
and you can email me and I respond to my emails the best that I can I'm about six to seven days behind because I get so many emails but I don't I don't even know how to respond to this little bell notification thing uh, so I guess that's some sort of private message or something that you can send mm -hmm. uh, via YouTube but I haven't figured that all out and so I tell people if you want to get in touch with me please do so by email so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some verses in the Bible in which God the Father is called a person and God the Son is called a person. But Again, using the fake Catholic terminologies, God the Father is called a person. That's, that's God the Father is there. But then God the Son is called a person. The Bible never says God the Son. All right? And you see, you say this stuff to people, leading them to think, that it's in the text and it's not but see and you say why are you making such a big deal with it because you can't prove the catholic trinity thing without adding to the scriptures that's the whole issue here the godhead you can prove from the king james bible alone without adding any other words or anything else the catholic trinity you have to add terminology that appears nowhere in the king james bible that's why it's satanic the whole concept of the catholic trinity is satanic talk about that in future videos but I haven't found that verse that says the Holy Spirit is a person and I'm hoping it's there and maybe I'm just missing it so I'll let you add that but I'm doing this video because there's some people out there that say Jesus is the Father and Jesus is the Holy Spirit or that it's called the oneness doctrine in which they say Jesus only is God and Jesus is the Father and there's a lot of people that are messed up on the doctrine of the Trinity the doctrine of the Trinity there is no such thing Unless you're a papist like you, Breaker. And again, there's there's a lot of people. And th it just, just happens to be three days after my video. You're subscribed to me, Breaker. I mean, what in the world? You know, have some guts. Name names. The Trinity is one God in three persons. And the Bible teaches that. Why? Let me go to that verse first. That's 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. And 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and that these three and these three are one. One God, three separate persons. Where does the scripture say that? It does not say that. It does not say three separate persons. You're adding to the scriptures. Again, the Catholics admit it. Let me show you here. Actually, I can go to the Roman Catholic Catechism. Um, number 251 to show you here. Let me zoom out. Go to the next one here. Number 251. All right. Let's zoom in. Here we have it. In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin, substance, person, or hypostasis, relation, and so on. In doing this, she did not submit the faith to human wisdom, yes she did, but gave a new and unprecedented meaning to these terms, which from then on would be used to signify an ineffable mystery and infinitely beyond all that we can humanly understand. They admit, they used, they added the word person it's not in scripture see here's how the mind control works all right they take you to a passage and they'll say now here you can see see clearly the trinity and the three separate persons it's right there uh where are those words at they're not there incredible let's continue all right now I was reading through my Bible and I went to 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 so I can make this bigger for those that want to see it and I'm reading about Jesus Christ and Paul is speaking in 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10 Paul says to whom ye forgive anything I forgive also for if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it for your sakes forgave I it in the, notice the word used, in the person of Christ. Wow. Uh, we're all persons. 
right? A person of Christ. That doesn't mean somehow he's a separate person than God the Father and the Holy Spirit. A very weak argument. So our King James Bible says that Jesus Christ is a person. And the Apostle Paul is speaking about Jesus and says in the person of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> what does that prove? So that's a verse that talks about the Trinity, Jesus Christ being a person. That's a verse that talks about the Trinity, Jesus Christ being a person. Huh? It doesn't talk about the Trinity. The Trinity is not a Bible word. It's a Catholic, pagan word. And many Christians say we believe in the Trinity, the doctrine of one God in three persons. All right, now, the next one is in Hebrews. And as we were going through our verse-by-verse -verse Bible study in Hebrews, I saw this, and I said, wow, this is pretty good. This is talking about God the Father and God the Son. It's talking about God the Father and God the Son. Well, God the Father is a biblical term, but God the Son is not. You see, it's so important to know your King James Bible. But just to even watch it and say, wait a second, it doesn't say God the Son. And it's funny, because I'm going to show you here, he makes a major boo-boo. You, you really messed up there, Breaker. You see, this passage, I don't even, even see this one before, but this is actually an argument for those of us that believe the biblical Godhead, that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Thank you for proving our system to be true, the Bible system to be true. All right? Watch this. And it shows you clearly that God the Father is a person. Hebrews 1, verse 1 through 3. Let me read it. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Okay, so God, that would be God the Father, at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past to the fathers. And he hath his Son, who is the Son. The Son is Christ. So we see verse 1, God the Father. In verse 2, we see God the Son. Jesus. We see God the Son. This is not the Holy Spirit leading you to say these things, Breaker. God the Son. We see God the Son. No, and see, but see, and you say, well, you're, you're, you know, okay, but we can understand. These words have to be added to teach the Trinity. That's what he's doing here. That's why I'm making such an emphatic point about this. You have to add to the scriptures in order to teach the Catholic Trinity. So he will show you the scriptures right in front of your face and he'll say, here we see, see God the Son. By his Son. They'll take a philosophical term that was created to make the Trinity thing work. I just showed it to you in the Catholic Catechism right there online. They'll take that philosophical term and they'll inject it into the text while you're looking at the text and it's not even there. But watch out what he does here. This is fun. Jesus Christ, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. All right. Now verse 3, speaking about Jesus, and the word his is God the Father. Hebrews 1.3, who being the brightness of his glory, who? The Son, Jesus, is the brightness of the glory of the Father, and the express image of his person. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the express image of the person of God the Father. <laughs> yes, Breaker, thank you for proving our point. All right, those of us that believe the biblical Godhead. Yes, Jesus is the image of the Father. Okay, he's the body. God is the soul that's how the thing works god is not a separate body you know again the catholic trinity people teach god the father has a body soul and spirit and it's separate from jesus christ who has a body soul and spirit of his own and somehow magically the holy spirit has a body soul and spirit kind of weird so you have nine gods you know if you believe in the catholic trinity when it gets right down to it God and three persons composed of three parts each, so it's a total of nine. <laughs> Weird. But look at this. And the express image of his per person there. Yes, Jesus is the image of the person of God. Let me show you some unique scriptures on this. 
cover him up there for a little while. First of all, we'll go to Colossians chapter 2. Okay, it's funny. Beware lest any man, verse 8 here, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. You understand? Catechism. Um, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Christ, you see. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the fullness of the Godhead. Body, soul, spirit. Jesus, God, Holy Ghost. In one body. That's what the Bible teaches. But now let me show you another one. A direct tie into Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world, meaning Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Christ is the image of God. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Jesus says in John chapter 14. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the image of God. Do you understand? So when Breaker says, look, see Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says in the express image of his person. That's a separate person then. How does that even work? If Jesus has an image that is his own person, and yet he's also somehow the image of God the Father's person as well. What are they, identical twins or something? <laughs> Continue. So God the Father is a person or a personage in heaven. God the Son came down from heaven, born of a virgin, is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. Two separate persons, but it's one God. And it says, in upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So, I found... No, I don't, I don't get how these people, these Trinity people, it's, it is a false god that they worship. It's a false pagan idol. All right. I mean, just go to Google Images. I'm going to do this in another study. And just type in Trinity statue or something. They got these things all over the place. All these Catholic cathedrals and whatever else they have. Trinity statues everywhere, and you have the old guy, you know, and he's this, and the Jesus guy, is, you know, always looks effeminate, and you know, and he's got his little cross, and you know, whatever. And then you got the flying bird above him, you know, all over the place. It's a false pagan idol, is what it is. And they'll say, you got the two; they're they're two separate; they're three separate actually, but yet one God. It doesn't even work. That's insanity. And they'll say, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and it's just one. See, it's three, but it's one. Mental illness is what we call this. Or lost, you know, two. But uh, let's continue. Two verses. And I'm looking for the third one. And I haven't found it yet. What I did is I went to my King James Bible engine, a search engine, my e-sword, and I looked up person and persons. And I've yet to find a verse, and maybe I just haven't studied enough, that says the Holy Spirit is a separate person. Although we know that. But many people have asked and said... Uh, did, you, did you hear what he said? Um, I have yet to find a verse that says the Holy Spirit is a separate person. I can't find a verse, and yet we know that. You see, you see how the Catholic thing comes in here? Um, if you can't find it in the sacred scriptures then you find it in your uh, divine tradition um, the church creates certain philosophical terms to make it more easy for you to understand the concept of the trinity Let's continue well why do people believe that that in their creeds or in their doctrinal statements why do they say that they believe in one god in three persons because they read the king james bible yeah, okay. Uh, they read the King James Bible. Hasn't proved any of it yet. One God in three persons. No place in Scripture. Nowhere. And yet he's, he's sitting here 
lying to people. It's, in, it's right there. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. It's not there in front of your face, but you are seeing it. And the King James Bible in 2 Corinthians 2.10 says, I forgive them in the person of Christ. So Jesus Christ is a person. He's identified as a person in the Bible. And then you go to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Jesus Christ is in the brightness of his glory. Who? God the Father's. And the express image of his person. Who? God the Father. So these are the two verses I found that, that show the word person. And so it's not wrong, as some would say, to believe that God is one God in three persons. Yes, it is, because you didn't show any verses to prove it. And again, he uses singular word person and says, see, it proves God in three persons. Insanity. He's one God with three persons. That's not a no, not. heretical uh, teaching. That's not a made-up Catholic doctrine, as some people might say. As some people might say, made up Catholic doctrine. Who would you be referring to? Oh, probably the one that you subscribe to. You stinking little coward. It is Catholic. The Trinity teaching is a Catholic teaching because their God is three. They have three gods. It's a pagan idol that will be worshipped in the time of Jacob's trouble as the Antichrist, the beast, in other words, the false prophet and Satan himself. continue it's not a a false teaching as the Jehovah Witnesses might say in the Bible there's one God who has three persons in the Bible there is one God who is three persons no scripture no scripture given and he's readily admitting I can't find the one for the Holy Spirit I can't find where it's the Holy Spirit's called a separate person but we know it's there in the Bible, one God, three persons. You see how these people will lie to you. Do you see it? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. No scripture. No scripture. He's a liar. So I'm going to leave these, these comments open on this video. And I want to see if anybody can come up with another verse that is in reference to, to the Holy Spirit. And it talks about the Holy Spirit being a person. Because I've looked and I haven't found it. But I thought, man, if those two are there, <laughs> maybe the other one would be. And so I thought, wouldn't that be interesting? So I'll put that out there and um, ask you to do your homework and see. Is there a verse in which the Holy Spirit is clearly... Now, the Holy Spirit clearly is God. And I believe I could show you verses on that. Uh, well, let me do that. Let me show you real quickly. We know that God the Father is God. We know that Jesus Christ is God. 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Who is it speaking about? Jesus Christ. So Jesus is God. God, God the Father is God. God the Son is God. Let me show you. You see how I did it? Again, again, people, understand how a liar works. He'll show you a verse of scripture. He'll tell the truth. He'll say, we see that Jesus Christ is God. Absolutely. No argument. Not a problem. And he'll say, God the Father is God. God the Son is God. Wait a second here. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible does not say God the Son is God. Insane. Continue. I'll show you one more. Uh, there's there are those out there that claim to be uh, some sort of Christians. They they are Jehovah Witnesses. They don't believe that Jesus is God. Well, First John five twenty says, and we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. So Jesus Christ is the true God, but He's the Son of God. So God the Father and God the Son are separate persons. See? See how he does it? Adding to Scripture again. God the Father and God the Son are separate persons. The Bible doesn't say that. Not at all. But they make up the one God 
according to 1 John 5, 7. These three are one. Now, is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. Acts chapter 5. And you go over to Acts chapter 5, and of course my computer's not responding. <laughs> Let me wait here just a second until this comes up. And uh, here we're going to go to Acts chapter 5. And there's a man here named Ananias, and Ananias lies. And here. Kind of like you're doing, Breaker. Never. We read in Acts chapter 5, verse 1 But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. All right, verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to who? To the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Now look at verse 4. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? In thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Okay, now Bible believers are going to look at that and they're going to say, see, Holy Ghost is God, not God the Spirit. Why? Because it doesn't say that in the text. Okay, God is three parts. God the Father, Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost. These three are one, one. Jesus Christ is the image of God the Father. And the spirit that's in the Godhead there is the Holy Ghost. It's easy to figure that thing out. Because it, is it easy to figure out what the Bible says and think? Yeah. Is it easy to understand how that works and how that the three can separate themselves as far as the three, you know, body over here, soul over there, spirit over there? No, I don't quite understand all that stuff. But uh, they're not three separate persons. Why? Because the Bible doesn't say that they're three separate persons. And we saw that the Catholics admit in the Catechism that they invented the word persons. Let's continue. So first, Peter says in verse 3, you lied to the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 5, he says, you didn't lie to men, you lied unto God. So these two verses clearly show that the Holy Ghost is God. So, stop working there again. But clearly, according to the Bible, according to the Word of God, God the Father is God, God the Son is God, God the Holy Spirit is God. Clearly, according to the Bible. See, he keeps repeating this thing. See, this is another tactic with mind control. You lie to people, and then you keep repeating it. Clearly, the Bible teaches See, and you just keep lying right in their faces as you're putting the scriptures right up in front of them, and they're looking at the scriptures going, it doesn't say that, but he's saying it. You understand the Catholic thing there? Okay, the scriptures don't say it, but my priest says it. Mind control. Used by deceivers and liars. And I've got two verses that show that God the Father is called a person in the Bible. God the Son is called a person in the Bible. Two verses that show God the Son is called a person. If you haven't figured it out yet, you're not going to get it. All right. If you're saved, you'll understand what I'm saying. So, is there a verse that says that the Holy Spirit is a person? I'll let you do your homework. I'll let you try to find that. I would love to get comments uh, and someone say, Brother Brick, I found this verse where it talks about the Holy Spirit being a person. If it's not there, well, at least we have other verses that prove that the Holy Spirit is God. So I'll leave it at that. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I, I couldn't wait to get this video done. and I want Okay, now i got to pause here for a minute because watch what he does. He actually says, if you don't believe in the Trinity, you're lost. If you don't believe in something that has no basis in Scripture, that does not appear in the King James Bible, then you're not really saved. You appeal to tradition and say, if you don't agree with the traditions and you believe only the Bible, only the Scriptures, then you're not part of the true church. Watch. I wanted to do it so nicely with beautiful azaleas in the background and everything. But it is what it is. I got to do it the best way I could. 
And I hope this is a blessing to you. I'm so glad that, that the Holy Spirit teaches us. And the Bible says that we have to be saved to understand. Somebody called me the other day and said, Brother Breaker, I, I'm, I met this man and he's wrong on the Trinity. He says, is that because he's lost? I said, hmm, I don't know. If someone claims to be a King James Bible believer and they're teaching wrong doctrine on the Trinity, then you're like, well, I wonder if that guy's even saved. Because the Bible says that the Word of God will lead us into all truth and the Holy Spirit inside of us will lead us into all truth. So if a guy's departing from the truth, you've got to wonder, is that guy even saved? And there's a lot of people out there that have false doctrine when it comes to the Trinity. But I believe the Trinity, as the Bible tells us, that God is one God and he's in three persons. So, do you see how I did it? I believe the Bible that tells us about the Trinity that God is one God in three persons. And he didn't prove any of it, including the whole purpose of this thing. I mean, look at the title, God in three persons. Hey, I, I can't find a verse that says that the Holy Spirit is a person. But yet the video is titled God in three persons. And he says, the Bible tells us God in three persons. I can't find it. Could you please help me find a verse that proves my warped doctrine? But this video proves God is in three persons. Let's finish this nonsense. Anyway, thank you for watching this. We'll see you next time. God bless. Uh, yeah, okay, you know, I mean, he just, he can't figure it out, you know, it's just, there's this guy, there's these people, and they just, they teach the thing of the, they teach against the Trinity, and we're not really, I'm not really saying who they are or whatever, you subscribe to me, you filthy, stinking liar, just absolutely disgusting, um, if you're watching Robert Breaker, and you haven't woken up to this guy being a total liar and deceiver, with his musing astrology, with him making false predictions of the rapture and lying, changing dates to match his, make his little system work out and everything else. If you haven't woken up yet and, and then having the, the gall to say that praying a prayer, asking God to save you is false salvation. I have no sympathy for anybody that's deceived by this guy anymore. He's been exposed by brethren now for a while. And uh, his little pit bulls come out and try to attack those of us that stand against him. And uh, whatever. Can't help you. All right. But I did this video for the newly saved Christians out there to be able to spot a fake, a liar. That they'll tell you. They'll show you the text and they'll say. Now the Bible says here. You can see it. It says blah, blah, blah. And you look at the text and it doesn't say anything of the kind. They're using terminology that the catechism says we had to make up to explain our concept of the Trinity. That's what you have to come away with this thing. That's the uh, moral of the story, so to speak. That's how you spot a liar, how you spot a deceiver. And you say, well, I just got I want to watch and I got to just continue and, and things and, and whatever. I'm a minister. I'm a preacher. All right. Part of my job description is to expose types of people like this. But if you continue to watch these guys and you start to watch these and the other enemies of the, of the Bible and the other enemies of my ministry as well, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I'm sinless or whatever else. I'm not saying that. Again, they lie about me on that. But if you watch these people, um, don't waste your time trying to hang around my ministry. Right? I don't need people that are so double-minded that they can sit around and just watch countless things from the enemies of the Bible and think that they're going to come away feeling okay with that and whatever. Well, I need to see both sides and things. No, you don't. No, you don't. The Holy Spirit convicts you about stuff like this. You say, why do you watch it, Brian? Because I know I'm going to get that. Uh, why did I watch it? Because I was sick the other night. I got about two and a half, three hours of sleep all night long, and I was just sitting there, and I, and I had gotten my work done and whatever else, and I saw this video come up. And I thought, I wonder what he has to say. It's ironic. He said it, you know, three days after my video came out. So I thought, all right, well, I'm going to watch this one. This is the first thing I've seen from him in a long time. And watched it, and I just thought, you know, I'm going to come out with a video about this. But I'm not going to keep some big thing going between me and Breaker and whatever else. He's false. He's false. I've proved that. 
over and over again. Other brethren have proved it. Um, there's a lot of heretics out there. Uh, don't waste your time watching these people. So that's going to be it. Uh, I just I hope people listen because I see this thing. I've seen a lot of people get taken away by these false prophets like this. They'll come along, they'll start listening to them, and and then they just start to veer off, and away they go. So that's going to be it. We'll see you in the next video.